This is the story of mathematics for most of the engineers. We forget everything we learn and end up using just an excel sheet. Of course, this is different for those who are working in research, in the academic field and in the R&D. Now things are changing with data analytics, with artificial intelligence and machine learning, where you need a very strong mathematical foundation. And also for all engineering students, if you want to understand the concept behind your equations and formulations in all your engineering subjects, you should have a strong knowledge in mathematics. Let's relearn all those maths again. Well, not for writing exam, but to understand the concepts behind it. The topic for the first session is functions. I have a disclaimer before we start. This is not a mathematics course, but just the revision of essential math skills required for mechanical engineering students. And you should also note that this is through the lens of an engineer and not by a mathematician. What is the mathematical definition of a function? A function is a binary relation over two sets that associates to every element of the first set exactly one element of the second set. Formally, a function f from a set x to a set y is defined by a set g of ordered pair x, y such that x belongs to x, y belongs to y and every element of x is the first component of exactly one ordered pair in G. Not clear? Then let's make it simple. Imagine function as a machine. Yes, as a machine. You give some input to the machine, that machine will do some operation with your input and gives you an output. This input is also known as argument and the output is known as image. The input is also called as variable. Let's say it is x and the function f does some operation with this x, it does an f of x and gives us the output y. One thing you should keep in mind is that same input can give two different outputs. This is a property of function. An example for a function is, let's take an electric vehicle. Say the Tesla Model S. One function which is of interest to us is its range, that is how long it can run with one charging. But the range is a function of speed. Here is the plot, which shows that for lower and higher speeds the range can drop and there exists an optimal speed of the vehicle to get the maximum range possible. Well, this is just a simple example of a function which you can just see as a plot or a graph. Now let's learn different elementary functions. We will start with a linear function. This equation is very familiar to you. y equal to mx plus c. Yes, this is the equation of a line where m is the slope and c is the y-intercept. Let's draw a line with c equal to 0 and m equal to 1. So it will look like this which passes through the origin. We can get different possibilities by varying the values of m and c. Look how the line changes with different slope values or different m values. And if you change the value of c, the y-intercept changes. That is the point at which the line touches the y-axis changes, which literally translates the line along the y-axis. So this is the linear function. An example is a cricket score, which we calculate in our mind when we watch a cricket match. In the linear function y equal to mx plus c, the slope value m here is a run rate. That is how many runs we take per hour. And we know that if the run rate is 6, then after the end of 50th hour, 
we will get 300 runs. If we vary the slope, that is the run rate, we will end up with different outputs or scores. If the run rate is 3, we will get only 150 runs. Similarly, if we want 350 runs, which is a good total, then our run rate should be 7 per hour. Our m value should be 7. Now let's switch to the next polynomial function, that is the quadratic function. y equal to ax square plus bx plus c. There are three constants in it, a, b and c. The shape of this curve is a parabola. If the value of a is positive, the parabola will be above the x-axis. And for negative value of a, parabola will be below the x-axis. Varying the value of b can move the parabola to left side or to the right side of y-axis. And if we vary the value of c, which is the constant, it can be used to translate it along the y-axis. Okay. An example for a quadratic function is the displacement of a car. We know this equation from our school physics, s equal to ut plus half at square. This is nothing but a quadratic equation with a variable t or time. Here u is the initial velocity and a is the acceleration. You can see that car can travel to a longer distance for the same time value if the initial velocity was slightly higher and even longer distance if we can accelerate the car or increase the value of a here. Okay. So that's about quadratic function. The next function is the cubic function. y equal to ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d. So here we have four constants. The curve is like a S shape. If we vary the values of these constants, we can get different combinations of this S shape. With larger b value, the two inflection points, the maxima and the minima is more evident. See the different possibilities of the curve when we vary the constants a, b, c and d. So now what are the applications of cubic function? Where we are going to use this function? Well, almost all the graphic softwares like Photoshop, ProE, AutoCAD, whichever you are familiar with, use cubic function to generate curves in it. And all these graphic softwares use a lot of mathematics for their coding. And in mechanical engineering, that is in thermodynamics, we have the Van der Waals equation of state. Here it doesn't look like a cubic equation, but it is a cubic equation and it is solved by defining a term called compressibility factor Z equal to PV by RT. Let's don't go deep into these equations. My idea is just to make you aware of various applications possible. Now let's look at the trigonometric functions, which are very important functions. We know from our school about the trigonometric relations using the right angle triangle. Sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse, cos theta is adjacent side by hypotenuse and tan theta is the ratio of opposite side to adjacent side or the ratio of sin theta to cos theta. One of the most important applications for engineers is to find the components of a vector quantity. A vector quantity is like force, velocity, etc. Let's say if we are applying a force of F Newton at an angle theta on a solid block. The horizontal component of this force is F cos theta and the vertical component will be F sin theta. Again, this is coming from the principle of this right angle triangle. But you will see these kind of equations a lot in mechanical engineering subjects, in fluid mechanics, in solid mechanics, etc. Other important relation which you should remember is the small angle approximations. That is for a very small value of theta in radians, the value of sin theta is approximately same as theta itself. And cos theta will be approximately equal to 1 and for tan theta it will be again theta itself. This will be more clear when you plot these functions and look at the values closer to 0. When we say sin theta, the picture which comes in our mind is this waveform which varies between minus 1 and 1 with a period of 2 pi. But how do we get this curve? The idea is again coming basically from the right angle triangle itself. For that, let us consider a unit circle, that is a circle with a radius equal to 1. Then consider a right angle triangle inside it. The vertex which touches the circle will be moving with different values of theta. Okay, if you change the value of theta, this point will be changing or moving along the circle. 
From the right angle triangle principle, the x coordinate of this point will be cos theta or basically r cos theta, but r is 1 for us. So it will be cos theta and the y coordinate will be sin theta. So when we vary the value of theta, that is when the vertex move along the circle, we get the values of sin and cos theta geometrically, which are the values varying between 1 and minus 1. Then we can plot these values. Now when we plot it, we can get this sine and cos waves. Let's have a closer look at these curves. The x-axis is in radians. You should be already knowing that pi radian is 180 degrees. Let's see the sine wave first. Sine curve passes through the origin and at the value of pi by 2, the function gives the maximum value that is 1. One more thing which you can notice is it is cyclic in nature, which, which is having a period of 2 pi. So after every 2 pi, the, the curve will be same. Cos theta is same as sin theta. But the only difference is cos theta is at a phase difference of pi by 2. That is, it is shifted by 90 degrees from the values of sin theta. The ratio of these two functions is the tangent or tan. And the black curves here shows the function tan x. You should also understand that we can vary a sine curve by varying its amplitude and frequency. For y equal to a sine bx, a is the amplitude and b is the frequency. You can notice that different shapes of sine x are possible when we vary the value of values of a and b. There are many engineering applications for these functions. All the periodic phenomena which repeats are mathematically modeled by using sine and cos functions. For example, the equation of a slider crank mechanism. This is the mechanism used for the movement of a piston in an internal combustion engine. Then in locomotives, including the motion of valves, engine, etc. In fluid mechanics, to model the phenomena like vortex shedding behind a cylinder, and in structural engineering, for example, to model the vibration of a beam. So for all these applications, trigonometric functions are widely used. The next important function is the exponential function. It is written as y equal to 2 power x or y equal to 10 power x or in general y equal to a power x. Where a is called the base and x is called the exponent. So what do you mean by y equal to 2 power x. It means for each variation in x, the number will be doubled. For x equal to 1, it will be 2. For x equal to 2, it becomes 4. For x equal to 3, it becomes 8, then 16 and so on. The general exponential function which we see everywhere is e power x. So what is this e? e is a magical number known as Euler number. It is just like the number pi, a special number in mathematics. Its value is 2.718281 and it goes on. It's, a, it's an irrational number and these digits never stops and never repeats. Now let's plot exponential functions. In general, y equal to a power x will look like this. The initial growth will be minimal, but then it exponentially grows. If the value of a becomes equal to 2.7182, etc., that is the value of e, both the curves e power x and a power x will merge together. Similar to the exponential growth, there will be exponential decay also, like the variation of temperature in a cooling process, that is represented by e power minus x. Examples of exponential function is corona or COVID-19 infections. Initially, the number looks very small, but then eventually it exponentially increases. Other example from mechanical engineering field is the transient conduction phenomena, where the variation in temperature is exponential with respect to time. Now let's see the logarithmic function. Log function is the inverse of exponential function. 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8. Now, if you do the inverse of it, that is log to the base 2 of 8 will give us 3. This is nothing but what should be the power of 2 
to get the value 8. So log to the base 10 of 1000 will give you 3. So that is 10 to the power 3 will give us 1000. So we are just trying to get the value of the power. And log to the base E is known as natural logarithm and it is written as ln. If we plot log to the base of A of x, the curve looks like this. And when the value of A reaches that of E, the natural log curve will be merging together with the log A curve. And these are all the major functions which you must know as an engineer or an engineering student. Now we can also have a look at some of the miscellaneous functions like 1 by x, y equal to x raised to 4 whose value is always positive, very small near the origin and increases rapidly away from the origin. Another function is the mod x which gives only positive value as the output even for negative x values. Then we have the cortex which is 1 by tan x, secant x and finally cosecant x. So that's all for today's video. In the next video, we will discuss about slope and derivatives. So please subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos and also click the bell icon for notification. See you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.